songs for us this morning all hail the power of Jesus' name and crown him with many crowns. I am uh, Chaplain Robert, and it's good to be with you today. This morning, uh, my scriptures, the scriptures I will be using are from Hebrews 12 and Philippians 2, and then a spattering of a, a couple others as we go along. And I entitled this morning's devotion, When Joy Meets Obedience. So I'm going to begin with reading Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that it so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not not grow weary and lose heart. So for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. And then in a similar verse in Paul, uh, Paul says in Philippians 2.8, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, to the point of death, even death on the cross. So joy, what is joy? Is it being battered or bruised by harsh words or criticisms? Uh, is it experienced conflict? Um, Is is joy walking with someone through a crisis? Um, Is joy standing up for your belief when it is the minority voice? Or is joy happiness, getting what you desire, or better yet, not having a care in the world? Well, joy and obedience. Associating joy with obedience, it's not something that we often think about. They're two words that seem kind of um, opposite to each other in some ways. Obedience may have a negative overtone. Um, if you think about uh, as, as children, when we were told to obey our parents, um, especially when we didn't want to. As children, uh, um, that was, yeah, maybe negative although for, for our good. As adults, um, we're instructed to obey uh, our, our, our God in heaven. And sometimes that doesn't always seem desirable. However, in Hebrews 12, <clears throat> Jesus' most profound, profound act of obedience was submitting, him, uh, was submitting to the cross. And that is described as joy. So Jesus' joy was set before him. This joy that was set before Jesus enabled him to press along faithfully in the way of sacrifice. But the present joy that was involved in sacrifice was also no small source of strength for him. Jesus, by his course of faithfulness and obedience, proved the truth of this statement from Nehemiah 8.10. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. So was it uh, Jesus' death on the cross that gave him joy? No, I don't think so. He endured the cross. As we understand Jesus' mission, we cannot overlook his unswerving commitment to his Father and to the great work he had come to this earth to perform. In John 15, 10, and 11, we read that Jesus makes, Jesus makes these comments. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you, speaking to his disciples. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and, by, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my, 
uh, my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. It was, the consequence, it was the consequences of his obedience that brought joy for the joy. We, his beloved children, set free from sin and death is the source of this joy. We know that it wasn't an easy task for Jesus. In fact, a very difficult uh, one, uh, a choice, a very difficult choice to obey. You may remember that Uh, before Jesus was arrested in the garden, he prayed and three different times he went to his father asking if this was really what he needed to do. Luke 22, 42. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Not my will, but yours be done. Joy meets obedience when we are working for a purpose, a mission, a worthwhile goal. From the Message Bible, from Philippians 2, 12 and 13. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. We experience joy when we work hard to achieve something. Paul told the Philippians to be strong in faith. Know what you believe and be willing to work hard in the Christian faith for God's good pleasure or for his joy. Joy meets obedience when there is trust. Fix your eyes on the author and perfecter of our faith. We have this ultimate expert, the greatest mentor, the best teacher. Paul says in Philippians 2, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, thought he w- who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being fo- born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, uh, obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Joy meets obedience when we see the fruit of our labor in the lives of others. Luke 10, 17 says that they were filled with joy when they recognized their partnership in the gospel. Jesus reminds them to enjoy their relationship with God even more. Actually, here's Philippians 2.14 from the message. Do everything readily and cheerfully. No bickering, no second guessing allowed. Go out to the world, uncorrupted, a breath of fresh air in this squalored and polluted society. Provide people with a glimpse of good living and of the living God, carry the light giving message into the night, so I'll have a good cause to be proud of you on the day that Christ returns. You'll be living proof that I didn't go to all, to all this work for nothing. Here Paul was encouraging the Philippians to carry on the fruits of their labor. He was encouraged them, encouraging them to but also encouraging himself because of their obedience and faith in living out their faith. Joy is not suffering. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves of that. Psalms 35 says, For his anger lasts only a moment. We might say that of suffering as well, that suffering is only for a moment. But his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Jesus did not enjoy suffering, being hung on that cross. However, it was through his obedience to death with the hope of our salvation 
which brought him joy. I just want to uh, read some of the words to the song, Keep Me Near the Cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross, there a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain. Near the cross, a trembling soul, love and mercy found me. There the bright and morning star shed its beam around me. Near the cross, O Lamb of God, bring its scenes before me. Help me walk from day to day with its shadow o'er me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till the rapture soul shall find rest beyond the river. Let's pray. God, this is a day that um, we remember your obedience. Your obedience of going to the cross for our redemption. And we're told that you did it with joy. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Walk with us each day, and may we remember the joy that is before us as we look to see you again. In Jesus' name, amen.